another baby massage instructor, I'm always striving to impart to new parents the importance and massive benefits of massaging and touching the little one. When they are born, after nine months in a safe, nurturing environment, they find themselves in a very different place with much to adjust to. However, their journey is far more challenging and dramatic when they are born prematurely. Firstly, they're likely to find themselves in the NICU with the goal of keeping them alive. And then they face being poked and prodded with the endless barrage of tests. Can you imagine what that's like for a baby? This week's guest, Tracy Kondrashuk Brander, is no stranger to this environment. Tracy is a neonatal and early intervention occupational therapist, as well as a licensed massage therapist, and has worked with children from birth to three, as well as premature infants over many, many years. So in this episode, you'll hear Tracy and I talk about why touch is even more important with babies born prematurely, the importance of skin-to-skin time with their parents, and how it benefits sleep, heart rates, and oxygen levels, and how massage can benefit sensory integration issues that kids who are born premature often face, and so much more. I'm infant massage instructor Helen Thompson, Hello and welcome to First Time Mums Chat. Being a parent for the first time is challenging and changes your life in every way imaginable. To help ease your transition into parenthood, I aim to offer supportive, holistic approaches and insights for mums of babies aged four weeks to 10 months old. My goal is to assist you to become the most confident parent you can and smooth out the bumps along the way. This podcast is brought to you by My Baby Massage, so let's do this together. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Please contact a medical practitioner if you are concerned or have any medical issues. Hi Tracy and welcome to First Time Mums Chat. I'm delighted to have you here. And I'm looking forward to chatting with you about the importance of touch, particularly with premature babies, and also hearing your pearls of wisdom about sensory integration. So, can you start by telling us about what you do and your background? Great. Well, thank you for having me on your podcast today. My name is Tracy Kondrashuk Brander. I am a neonatal and early intervention occupational therapist. I've been so for about 27 years. I've worked with a multitude of children from birth to three and are premature infants. And I am a licensed massage therapist and a certified sleep consultant for infants and toddlers as well. You said you worked for premature infants. Yes. I also know that you work with sensory integration and how we adapt to that. So As you mentioned premature infants, I thought I'd ask you that first. So how do you work with premature infants? Well, it's a great topic to get started into the sensory integration autism spectrum disorder children because a lot of these babies are born premature. Their nervous systems, which we have seven different sensory systems that have to be integrated. And a lot of the maturation actually occurs the last trimester of the pregnancy. And a lot of these kids are born before that time or somewhere in that time. So their sensory systems don't necessarily mature like yours and mine do. So I used to do a lot of infant massage to the kids to start helping them integrate, especially tactile Mm -hmm. and proprioception and different kinds of things in their sensory system. So they wouldn't be overwhelmed in a very harsh NICU environment that they're exposed to? I know infant massage is very good for that because that's what I do. And I've never actually worked with any premature infants, but I am aware of how important touch is for premature babies. Yeah, mine was basically to get them from these kids in the NICU. I mean, they could be anywhere from a pound to, Mm -hmm. I think my oldest one was probably 13 pounds. But a lot of these kids have so much negative touch when they're in the NICU that infant massage and our skin to skin or kangaroo care are one or two of the positive things that 
parents can do for their babies. So I would teach a lot of the massage to the parents so they could show them some positive touch because these kids are constantly poked and prodded under the armpits. They get heel sticks. They're getting tests all the time. They're having a lot of obnoxious negative stimuli, you know, for oxygen and CPAP and some of them are intubated. So they've got tubes going down their throat. So people don't realize how much negative touch that they get as as premature infants or sick infants at that point. So they start to have a lot of sensory integration issues as far as tactile. So we try very early on to do massage in the NICU when they are medically stable to get started. And I used to do a lot of teaching that way. I think that's so good. It actually brings the point of how important touch actually is. A natural touch, and as you say, positive touch. We just think of babies as a tiny little thing, but they pick up on what's going on. If they're going through all that, it must be quite a hard thing for the baby as well as for the mother. Yes, and it's something for the dad to be able to do as well, because mm, a lot of times the mother gets more of the interaction than the dads do. So I used to love when the dads would show up at the bedside because they'd be petrified very scared to touch their own babies. But once these babies are stable and you can give them the cues that your baby's okay for some massage, then that's what I would teach them because their touch is very, very important for that bonding that they don't get when they're born so premature that they have so much medical equipment around them and they're getting so much medical care that they're doing hands-on basically to keep them alive and fed and to make sure that they're okay. Not so much for that bonding with the parents because some of these babies don't get that. When you're stimulating and giving them touch, doesn't that help circulate the blood supply to get it get it moving to warm the blood supply up? It helps with circulation, but some of these babies are so medically unstable that they cannot tolerate very light touch. So we show them things like the preemie hold and just to be able to give them some firm pressure because some of these kids can't even tolerate infant massage at that point. So we're just showing them some very nice holds so the parents can get some tactile with their kids if they're not ready for kangaroo care and not true massage. I think some of the smallest kids I've ever massaged are a little over two pounds. And that's small. And just to be able just to do a little bit of foot massage and a little bit in the hands, because a lot of times they can't tolerate things to their faces and other parts of their body yet. It's just too overwhelming. I can understand that. Yeah. Yes. You said kangaroo care. What's kangaroo care? Kangaroo care is skin to skin. So here in the United States, I think we're kind of behind in that kind of phase. When newborns are born now in regular rooms and there's no problem, they're full term, they're literally putting them right on the mom's chest for up to an hour after they're born to get that bonding and giving them off to the dads so they can get that bonding right away. Whereas our premature infants are quickly whisked away to the neonatal intensive care unit because they're performing life-saving procedures on them. So when they get older in the NICU, at the bedside, the nurses, and sometimes myself, would place the baby on the mom. And you have to be able to hold them anywhere from one to two hours at a time. And literally, the baby would be just in a diaper, and the mom would have a hospital gown on, and they would slide the baby on the chest and tape down, like if they're on a vent or if they have IVs and things like that, they would tape them to the parents and then they cover them just like with a nice blanket. And they're reclined in a chair and they're literally getting that positive touch. If we can't give them a massage, the best thing we can do for our babies is let them do skin to skin care with their parents. So that's what that does and it helps regulate sleep, It brings down their heart rates. It brings oxygen levels up. So it has such a positive effect, just like the massage would. But this is even something even more primitive, but more effective for our babies to have that skin to skin with with their moms and dads. And sometimes their siblings, older siblings are doing it too now. I think skin to skin, it all links in with the importance of touch and how important it is. It's very important. And that was my job initially in letting 
parents do things like that because besides changing diapers and checking their temperatures and things like that, doing the massage and positioning their babies and skin to skin was some of the first kind of parenting some of these people had had since their child's been in the NICU. And that must be so nice for the parents to be able to actually feel and touch their own baby. Oh, yeah. 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 And just showing them the right kind of touch so they're not Mm. stressing them out. And that's the biggest thing is, is teaching them what is negative touch and what's obnoxious or negative touch Mm. for our babies. Is your little one suffering from colic or constipation? I may have just the thing to help you experience less crying, less stress, and have a happier, more contented little one and household. Just go to mybabymassage.net forward slash colic to get your free colic cheat sheet. Start soothing your baby and get some much needed rest and build a deeper bond that grows stronger every day. That's mybabymassage.net forward slash colic. So how can we adapt and support them with sensory integration? Well, as I said, a lot of our kiddos, when they're born premature, tend to have a lot of sensory integration issues, meaning their sensory systems do not mature like yours and mine do. And working in early intervention, birth to three here in the state, I'm finding more and more children are having a lot of sensory integration issues. They are bombarded by different kind of external stimuli in their environment, tactily, visually. They're overstimulated. A lot of our computer kids that want to do a lot of technology, you know, we're finding the more technology these kids have access to, the more it's overstimulating their brains Mm -hmm. as far as their sensory systems. And so I do a lot of education to our families about that. The blue light, so visually, auditorily, just all different types of sensory systems are starting to be more and more involved with our kiddos. And and they're getting younger and younger in age with these issues. So we just need to adapt what we're doing. You're a massage expert as well. So we know what the positives are for our regular kiddos. We're trying to get our kiddos with sensory issues out of that fright and flight when you have that adrenaline pumping through their system. So they're in a fright and flight. Their whole body is in that kind of mode in that they can't focus. They can't sit still. They don't like people touching them, so they run away. They kind of self-stim. You'll see them spinning in the room by themselves or climbing. So they're looking for different kinds of things that their sensory system's looking for. And tactically, as I said, some of our kiddos do very well with massage if it's done properly. Mm -hmm. And not overdone. Yeah, because I know some kids who are autistic, and I don't like labeling. Correct. I know those are some of the stigmas that people say that kids have, but if you can catch that, they've got those issues at an early age, whether they're premature or not premature, what you're saying, you can help them at an early age to find out all about this uh, in sensory integration and give them the support to learn how to do that. Is that right? That's correct. That massage is one good avenue to use as me as an occupational therapist, when I'm treating my kids that are showing red signs for autism. So I'll go through a whole gamut of different things. A lot of our kids with sensory integration issues love deep pressure, whether it's to the head, to the whole body, shoulders, arms, trunk, legs, their feet. So that's what I kind of start at is their tactile system Tactically, what can they tolerate? A lot of these kiddos don't like light touch. And that's like our premature babies. They can't handle light touch. That actually gets their nervous system all Mm. wound up, so to speak. But for our kids that might be on the spectrum, that deep pressure will help with eye contact, but it'll also help that nervous system to calm down. Mm. So you don't want to do anything very fast when you're touching these children because that just puts them into flight. Their adrenaline will just kick in and you'll see them get all wound up. But if you do things very slowly, very 
slow rocking with the kids so you can tactically have them on your lap or holding them and just doing some deep pressure with them just to get them calmed down. So they're going for that sympathetic and that fright and flight to a parasympathetic, which is a different sensory system and a different nervous system that goes, like you can hear that breath literally come out because they're starting to relax and their sensory system tactily is starting to calm down. It's like you and I getting massage. We're on the table for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, or 90 minutes, but it takes us a while to really feel that relaxation. Same thing with our kids on the spectrum that you can't expect automatic, quick one to two minute. Sometimes my whole session, like 45 minutes, just to get the child to calm down. So that's when I'll teach some of our parents very, very simple massage strokes. Very simple. And every child's different. So that parent's got to figure out what part of that body is very calming for them. A lot of our kids are very hypersensitive on their heads, so we don't want to touch their heads Mm -hmm. or their hands or their feet or orally. So that facial massage is usually not a thing we start with or the head, hands, or feet. But a lot of times you can do their backs. You can do their arms and their legs. And that's Mm -hmm. where I tell my parents to start. Have you worked with children like that? I have when I was a childcare worker. That was a while ago, but I never knew about massage then. I never knew about the sensory touch then. But I sent that they didn't like to be touched on the face and they didn't like to be touched in certain areas. Yes, Um, I tell my parents, find somewhere else. And a lot of times it's their back. Like my son is on the spectrum. He's very high-functioning Asperger's. So he's in a regular classroom. He got therapies for years for speech, apraxia but he's very tactically defensive. But if you would rub his back and go on either side of his spine in one direction, you will find him just calm down right before bedtime. So yes, my son is a great example. He had a lot of sensory integration, but found that using the massage with him before bedtime, was very calming for him. And he just turned 12 this weekend. And I still massage his back. Not a true massage, just rubbing, stroking his back, Mm. getting his little knots on his shoulders because he's very athletic. So he's always doing sports. But that's what calms him down. That's what brings him down. Even though he's wound up, if I do that, that just brings his system down. So he turns over and passes right out. So I've been doing it for years. Yeah, since he's been a baby, to help him with sleep at nighttime. Yeah, that's what I always say to parents. If they ask me how to help the baby to sleep, that's what I say. You give them a massage on the back or just gently on the legs, and it really does calm them down. It does, and a lot of the kids love their legs. As I said, I have one mom whose child has not been tested yet for autism, but we're pretty 100% sure she's moderately autistic. The one thing that calms her down is massaging her legs because she's moving constantly. So when mom's trying to calm her down, she's found that just doing a few massage strokes with her on her legs just kind of brings her down for Mm -hmm. a certain amount of time. And kids need to be able to calm and focus in order to play and to interact with their environment. And if you can't get them in that state of calmness, they can't learn. They can't process things around in their environment. And I just tell them, if we can't get them in a state of calmness, they're not going to be able to interact with you well. They won't be able to follow simple commands for you. They will literally tune out everything around them, their whole environment. They won't be curious about, oh, what's in the bookcase? And I think I'm thirsty. Let me go over to the refrigerator and mommy will get me a drink when I walk over there. So just your basic types of things that people don't think about just with that touch is actually key to our kids on the spectrum. I am really passionate about First Time Moms Chat and providing a weekly resource that helps parents who are new to the whole world of parenting. And I want to hear from you. 
I warmly welcome questions and feedback and comments on my podcast episodes. You can send me a voicemail message quickly and easily from your smartphone or computer by going to mybabymassage.net forward slash message. That's mybabymassage.net forward slash message. Yeah, there's so many keys and values to touch. And I think a lot of us are very unaware of it. And I think it's so valuable. Right. So with you educating your parents, do you normally teach just the infants? Well, have- and I actually massage on a doll. I love to massage your babies. Yeah. But I don't for two reasons, because I want the mum to get the sense of the touch and to get the bonding experience. And because I think it's important for the mum to do it. I have two certifications in infant massage and I am a licensed massage therapist for adults as well. One of them was literally me teaching them without me touching them, where the other one is a lot more like a trigger release where I did have to show them. First, I would show them exactly where to be touching them to do some trigger point release for some of our kiddos that had some postural things going on and were just so tense from all the overstimulation in the NICU. But yes, they're like, well, we can't do it as well as you. So I'd always get that. You do it so well. I said, I'm not taking your baby home. (laughs) So just giving them that encouragement, get on in there. You know, these dads with the big hands, they were petrified touching their three, four pound babies. But once they... They did it a couple times and they started getting a lot more confidence and then they really enjoyed it. So we Mm. really started seeing the parents really get more engaged with their babies and feeling more control of of their own infant, even though they're in the NICU. And a lot of them would say to me, I don't even feel like their parent. Everybody else is doing everything for them. So these are small, positive and very crucial things that we can give to our parents to empower them with their small ones yeah well that's what I like to do help the parents build their confidence to be able to communicate and touch your own baby so that's one of the reasons another reason why I don't want to touch a baby because it's not my baby and as you quite rightly say I'm not taking the baby home they are it's their child so that therefore it's important that they build up their confidence and they build up their touch skills and they build up the bonding experience with the child. Oh, I totally agree with you. So yes. And when COVID hit, I was teaching some all virtual. We were doing Mm -hmm. all virtual. So I did have a dog and going through some of this stuff because we weren't allowed into houses for 14 months when COVID hit in 2020. So we were doing all virtual early intervention, just like you and I are doing on Zoom. Mm. So for me, it was a great coaching model. And I still do teach. If I can't get down or I'm not in the area, I can still teach. And this is the model that we're using. And I'm doing a good job in teaching what they need to know. Mm. Virtual is better than nothing. Correct. And we found here in the United States, we're still using virtual. It's not gone away. So we can do both. We can do online and we can be in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So any tips that you'd like to give to moms that we haven't already mentioned? I guess they know their kids more than anybody. And I talk about this as a sleep consultant. You've got to watch your kids' cues for when Absolutely. they get over, overstressed and that positive touch may be needed is to really hone in on your kids. You've got to find their cues. We may not see it, you and I, but they know that they can start seeing those very subtle cues that like, this might be a good time for some tactile intervention. And, you know, it doesn't have to be 15 minutes. It could be one to two minutes, Mm -hmm. but that one to two minutes of the right kind of touch could mean a very positive experience for not only the child, but the mom and the dad, knowing that they know how to help calm their child with touch. They don't have to use words and other means or other sensory systems, but you know, their skin is their brain because it formally is a part of the brain that comes forward outward. So I always tell a lot of the parents, when you touch your child's skin, you're touching their brain. 
there's a direct link. It used to be part of the brain. So your skin covers your child. So what you do with them is very powerful. When you do touch children, you are actually touching their brain. So you want to definitely make it positive when you're interacting with their child. I think that's the biggest thing that I can give to a parent is just remember when you're touching their skin, you're touching their brain. So what kind of touch do you really want to give your child? I knew that, but it's something I've never actually said to parents. But I think I might add that when I do my baby massage classes, that when you're touching your child, you're actually touching your brain. It's the truth. Yeah. It is. It's a sensory system that these kids are constantly having contact with because it's covering their whole body. Whereas your ears are right here. Your eyes are here. But tactily, it's everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Very powerful sensory system. Oh, definitely. Both of us are we're massage people. We understand that. Oh, you better believe it. If anybody wanted to get in touch with you and find out more about what you do or come, come on to one of your virtual classes, or how would they go about doing that? Sure. I have a website. It's a telehealth website, but they can leave me a message there. That's earlydevelopmenttherapy.com. Mm-hmm. My friend and I have a podcast and that is NICU and Beyond with Tracy and Stacy. A lot of people seem to find it on Spotify, even though we have it on the four major. Spotify seems to be the place to find it. As a sleep consultant, you can find me at Tracy at tinytransitions.com. So those are probably the main places to catch me okay well thank you tracy i really enjoyed talking to you i've actually learned a lot more about what i do by talking to you i've actually learned a lot more about touch for premature babies which i knew about through my training but i've never actually ventured to do it so you've now given me a little bit more confidence to actually encourage mothers to do it when they're premature oh For sure. Please do encourage these moms and dads to be touching their baby because it really will help them in the long run with bonding and that sensory integration piece as the babies get older. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Tracy. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Oh, thank you, Helen. I appreciate being on your podcast. Wow. Tracy shared some great tips and insights, and I learned a lot from her. She certainly has a lot to offer parents with her many years of experience with babies and premature infants. I've included links to Tracy's podcast as well as the websites she mentioned in the episode in the show notes, which can be accessed at mybabymassage.net forward slash podcast forward slash zero eight. Please help me spread the word to other mums by rating and reviewing my podcast on Apple Podcasts. This helps me support more mums, yes, just like you, for a smooth journey into the exciting world of parenthood.